The early work in genetic circuits focused heavily on simple transcriptional circuits. In these systems, a promoter controls a transcription factor that controls a promoter that controls a transcription factor, and so on. Such systems can have very interesting dynamics and provide a challenging test case for precisely controlling the dynamic behavior of cells. They are also proposed as control circuitry for regulating biosynthetic devices, developmental processes, and biological computing. In all cases, transcriptional circuits can be described as a directed graph composed of transcriptional units that are nodes, and the edges designate their connectivity. What differs from one transcriptional circuit to the next is how many nodes are present and what is their repressor connectivity. Several of the simple configurations have been given names in the field, so let's outline them briefly. In each case, there is an input promoter, and the start of the experiment, the promoter is turned on by derepression of a transcription factor. So, typically this input promoter will be the TET or LAC promoter, and you can turn those on with ATC or IPTG. I designate that promoter here as a grayed out arrow symbol. Similarly, in each case there will be an output reporter, which I'll describe by a grayed out GFP gene. So the simplest genetic circus is the one that we've been discussing, a simple inducible promoter driving GFP. In the inverter, we add a single transcriptional repressor. The input promoter drives the R gene resulting in R protein, which represses some PR promoter controlling the output GFP. Let's consider what this circuit would do under the limiting cases. If the input promoter is low, then R will not be made and GFP will be high. If the promoter is high, then R is high and GFP is low. Thus, the output GFP signal is the inverse of the input promoter's transcription rate. In a cascade, we place the repressors in a daisy chain configuration where each added repressor represses the next until finally the last promoter controls GFP. When we use two such repressors, high input promoter transcription results in high R, which results in low S and then high GFP. When input promoter concentrations are low, low GFP results. Thus, putting two inverters in a row like this has the effect of inverting the inversion. When you combine an even number of repressors in a row, you get a monotonically increasing response to input. When the number of inverters is odd, you get inversion. The remaining circuits involve negative feedback. In negative autoregulation, we place the repressor downstream of the promoter it represses. We'll describe this one in detail later. When we have two repressors that inhibit each other's transcription, one will dominate over the other resulting in bistability. The system of molecules has two steady states, one in which R dominates and S is repressed, and the other in which S dominates. If we expand that to three repressors in a cycle of repression, we can get oscillatory behavior wherein R, S, and T repressors take turns being the most concentrated transcription factor.